Well, blissful morning, Prince folks. Today is July 28, 2022. Hi, babies. Hi, cakers. And mother-in-law, I love y'all and I miss y'all. And I'll be looking forward to seeing y'all soon, God willing. For it don't boast about tomorrow, for you know what today holds. But what today holds is the Lord's way higher than always in your hearts, minds, souls, and strengths. As y'all now go to Pine Ridge, South Dakota to give the word to the people there so they're edified. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to hear an awesome report of souls being courageous, being saved, and learning to be brave. I believe that way they call him uh, Takashala. I think so. I may be saying that wrong, too. <laughs> but not too bad for uh, Delaware. You know, I try to learn everyone's word for God and everyone for thank you. If I learn them two words, the rest of the language comes. Today's lesson is weak strength. We have a quote from D.L. Moody. When a man has no strength, if he leans on God, he becomes powerful. Ask Samson about that one. We have Proverbs 28 and 10. If you falter in times of trouble, how small is your strength? And you always hear me saying this. If you fail under pressure, your strength is too small. That's what the New Living Translation says. And the introduction in word. Paul struggled with the thorn in his flesh. <clears throat> Three times he asked God to remove it. But the now familiar answer was clear. My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Paul heard straight from God's mouth how to persevere in a trial. It is God's strength that carries us through. Jesus assured us that we would have trouble in this world. How negligent would our Father be if he knew this, and he did not prepare us for the tough times. He always keeps us fully equipped. Fully equips us. We are not designed to cruise to this life with ease. We are built for endurance by the God who has planned an eternity for us. He knows trouble will come. He simply must prepare us to handle it in grace and in his strength. And grace is unmerited favor, which is something you and I didn't deserve. Newly manufactured products are often given a stress test. An extreme amount of pressure is applied to them, more than they will experience in regular use, so that their strength can be verified. <clears throat> like crash dummies, you know, that kind of stuff. God does the same for us, <clears throat> as painful as it is, but there's a difference. He's not testing us for our strength. He is testing us for our inclination to depend on his strength. His power is the only power that can carry us through. So count and enjoy to be in a trial and tribulation. And that's what Jesus' brother James says in the first chapter of James, rather. We would agree with the proverb above. We do falter in times of trouble and our strength is small, but we have learned a secret. Small strength allows God allows room for God's power. It sends us in search of a sustainer and a deliverer, and there is no more worthwhile search. We will find him if we are under no illusion about our own self-sufficiency. Are you going through a trial? It is more than a lesson in tolerance. It is for your endurance and it is a lesson on dependence. Know your weakness, know your potential for faltering, then know the power of your God. Blessed is a person who can say, how small is my strength, with the knowledge that there is a greater strength available. And blessed is the giver of sufficient grace. When we are weak, he is strong. That is an awesome lesson. I like how it's, you know, compared to the world, how you know products will be tested like the crash test dummy for instance so they'll test the car but he's not testing how tough we are he's testing us to see how dependent we're going to be on him in his weakness in our weaknesses he's at his strongest that's pretty awesome and i mean i'll take well hey how wouldn't it now i know y'all ain't never tired of seeing my annie you know but when she left May 2nd, 2015, her leaving my, our marriage, not my marriage, but our marriage, it was, that was the greatest test I ever went through in life. And it still is. I leaned on the Lord. I almost depended on my flesh for vengeance, but instead I gave it to him and I got on my knees and I cried. And then I got, I, I put hope in there, the anchor of the soul. I was like, Lord, I believe right here, right now, from this day forth, she will come home. Our marriage will be reconciled. And she will give her heart back to you. And six years later, that's exactly what happened. But not like I thought. She really left this world. But you know what? She's healed. She's redeemed. She's restored. Her physical strength cannot handle it no more. But by the Lord's high power of his strength, 
he took her home so no more weakness no more sorrow and she could laugh without future i cried for her this morning I, I miss her forevermore but i'll meet her again beyond heaven's door one of these days so i'm dependent on the lord so that i got the sword and habit on my heart and i can pull it out like excalibur and fight every demon the devil has and even the devil himself because i know this world is nothing but foolishness but great god almighty jesus christ and holy spirit will give you the excellence of his wisdom so the scales fall from your eyes and it's no surprise as he writes your name in the lamb's book of life and he's testing you so that you can come home to him with a pure and undefiled heart knowing that you gave it to jesus who cleansed it and his way higher than always is your high priest and therefore <laughs> your strength will be in immeasurable because of his way higher than always leading you be blessed today in your iron journey